Let's talk about it. Who, who made this decision? European Open, hole 16. I get a tweet from Reb saying, what do you think about the changes to hole 16 this year for the European Open? So for our listeners, let me tell you, if you haven't seen it, this is what's going down. Hole 16, for those that remember, that was the hole that AB had his famous collapse where he just couldn't throw the disc in bounds. He had to keep throwing. So the rules of that hole were the bunker rule. You throw OB, you have to re-throw from that same spot, no stroke. So you just keep throwing. You just keep throwing until you land in bounds on the tee shot. You just keep throwing until you land on the island uh, on your second, third, fourth, however many it is. High pressure. These are the new rules for the hole. For any throw from the tee that comes to rest in the OB, the player receives one penalty throw and must refrow from the previous lie or continue from drop zone one. Now you might be asking, well, where is drop zone one? Uh, drop zone one is 328 feet. Potentially like a really good angle. Like most people would love to have their tee shot land there probably uh, to throw that shot. Now you might be saying, okay, well, that's not too bad. Well, for any throw from the fairway or from drop zone one that comes to rest OB, the player receives one penalty throw and must rethrow from the previous lie or continue to drop zone two. So now you're saying, well, wait, Brody, I thought you said that you hated drop zones on par four. And I thought you said you hated two drop zones on par four. Yes, you would be correct. This is my least favorite thing ever. Because, oh, guess what? You you threw your first shot OB. Oh, don't worry. Go to this drop zone. Oh, you threw that third shot OB. Oh, don't worry. We're going to give you a putt for bogey. You haven't thrown a disc in bounds. And you can still save bogey. With a 45-foot putt. What are we doing? What are we doing? Yeah, I, I I cannot fathom why you would take one of the one of the most electric moments from all of last year and say, you know what, we don't like that. We don't want that to happen. We want to make this hole easier. I mean, the there's something about hole 16 down the stretch of the European Open that you as you as a player. I mean, obviously pros have different mindsets, but like you always know hole 16 is looming and there's a chance that you could just take a number yep. that you don't expect on that hole. And yep. it, it changes the way you have to approach the rest of the round. You have to stay aggressive and stay competitive because you can't take your foot off the gas and go into hole 16 with a one stroke lead. You got to go in hole 16 with a two stroke lead or a three stroke lead. And especially after last year, it's, it's going to be in everyone's mind. It's like the perfect year to see the drama on this hole is after we get the drama last year, because now the hole has more teeth because of what it emotionally did to everyone last year. So I, I, I hope there's a way to get this changed. And if there isn't, we need to start, um, you know, asking and begging that when worlds goes there, in 2025, they don't make this dramatic, dramatic error. There are two holes. There are two holes that I have played where I am thinking about them a couple holes in advance. Mm -hmm. Hole 16 at European Open, hole 17 at USCGC. That's it. Yep. Those are the only two holes that yep. I'm really thinking, and maybe hole one at uh, Ledgestone, at um, Eureka. Oh yeah, that that tee shot is a terrifying. Kind of tee shot. <laughs> there, that tee shot is a little terrifying to start your round. Um, but outside of that, there's really no holes, and I'm trying to get this through people's minds. Sports are supposed to be difficult. We are supposed to see people put in difficult situations, and and be able to figure out a way to get through them. We keep putting on these kids gloves and being mm -hmm. like, oh, we don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. We don't want anyone to actually get through any trauma. We don't want, and we start making disc golf too easy. We're disc golf is already too easy. Stop making it easier. What are we doing? Stop doing that. Yeah, like we should have every hole. Imagine, imagine a tournament where almost every hole played like hole 16, mm -hmm. where you uh, imagine what would happen. Players would break down and have nervous, like anxiety <laughs> attacks. 
There, I mean, look what happened at Northwoods. Look what happened at yeah. Northwood that one year. Northwood has the most DNFs out of any other tournament. Is it because people get uh, their fingers cut? Is it because people get uh, their ankles? To- no. It's because people say, I've had enough. I can't do this anymore. I'm mm-hmm. out. This is what disc golf needs. Get the softies out of here and let the best players play on the hardest courses, on the hardest holes, and see who comes out winning. Yeah, the part that's the most egregious to me is, is this isn't just a regular tournament. Like, this is a major. This is supposed to be the best of the best. And to put kid gloves on a hole, or especially when we're talking about shots that are under 400 feet. Yes. You know, it's like, come on, make make them hit a shot. It's it, If you look at, like, the islands they have to hit on other courses, this isn't egregiously smaller than that. This isn't more difficult than that. Like, it's... It's going to be a sad day um, to to be, yeah, to watch to watch two people come down the stretch and watch one person get away with a bogey and um, not have any real consequence in their round. It's just going to be a sad thing. It's just disc golf is such a such a cool sport. Watch most people that see a disc fly in the air, they watch it. They're like, "That's pretty sweet. That's pretty mm-hmm. cool." We got to stop making courses easy. You got to start making them more challenging and harder. Yep. You have to, to get people excited, to get people to want to tune in. To yeah. get people that are watching at home being like, I would never be able to make that shot. I would never be able to do that. Anyone mm-hmm. and their brother can go and play this hole now and shoot a better score than AB did last year. Anyone. Yep. You literally turn around. Let me tell you how you do it. You turn around and you drop your disc out of bounds. Mm -hmm. Then you walk up to the tee pad. You drop your disc out of bounds. Then you go to drop drop zone two. You throw a Brody Scuba onto the green and you tap in for paw or tap in for double. And you just beat AB, the the, one of the top disc golfers ever that played the whole last year. It's stupid. It's absolutely stupid. It makes no sense. Yeah, especially as the court, the 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 fields get bigger in disc golf as we get more talent in there and better players and better players, the sport can't get easier. It has to get harder. And the longer we wait to do it, the the more eyes I think just go away from the sport. Like this is the time. And it's like the, the crazy thing is, is like some of these courses we play have like three hard holes. Like what were we, what were we all talking about at, at Des Moines hole 17, 18, those holes are hard. Mm-hmm. Did we say that about any other hole? Nope. No. So literally we're playing courses right now where there's two holes out of 18 that are hard and the rest yeah. aren't. Imagine if we played a tournament where every hole was hard and then there was harder holes. Oh yeah. I That would be oh, insane. That the people people would tune into that. I I think about it this way. I have gone and played a number of pro tour courses. I, if I go play the layout that the MPO play, I should have no business being on that court. There should be a clear and definitive skill gap between the average, like amateur player and the pro player in terms of what is required and what is, what is necessary. Like if I can birdie it, or like you said, if I can bogey it, uh, that's just, that's ridiculous. It just, just shouldn't happen. Yeah. Like imagine going right now to like a PGA tour course, Mm-hmm. And I put you on the back tees where they play, and I'm like, "Hey, you have a 238 yard carry over water. Good luck." Yep. You know. Yeah, I'd say where's the. You're gonna uh, be real quick. You're gonna, you're gonna quickly go. Holy crap, these guys are good. What the? I would say when's lunch. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, it's just it's crazy to me when people are like, "Oh my god, this hole's so hard." It's like that is what all of our holes should be because you have to make decisions. Yeah, or or we're, or we're going and playing darts. And again, I I know. Hey, to all my dart people out there, I'm sorry. I I know you guys hate it when I say this, but darts is not going to be a growing sport. Darts is not going to captivate the massive audience. Mm-hmm. It's it's a bar sport. It's a drinking sport. People like it. Whatever. That's fine. And the reason for it is it's very like. Yep. You're doing the same thing over and over again. Give us some people make decisions. 
Have people yeah. make decisions. And, and and holes don't have to be like there's some people in the in the comments talking about like the distances of holes. Holes don't have to be super far to be hard. There's great short holes yes. that can be difficult. Like look at hole 16 this past weekend. That required such a specific shot off the tee pad. That yep. hyzer flip up to flat with the right amount of speed control. Because if you went too far, you're going to be in a terrible place. You kick to the right or the left, unless you're A B jump putting 150 feet, mm -hmm. you're kissing your, your par goodbye. Like there are great ways to take short holes and make them difficult and make them effective, especially when you insert them right in the middle of like a set of longer holes to force players to switch up the way they're playing and have to re um, approach a hole with a different kind of mental state. But there's ways to do it. It's just across the board. Yeah. Disc golf has got to be harder. I'm all for it. I want to watch it. I, I I don't know too many people who aren't watching disc golf who who want to see pros go 18. 18 down should mean something Im, Im, amazing, almost miraculous have happened. We shouldn't be seeing pros consistently going 16 and 17 down and you know 15 down. It just should be possible. Make it harder. Northwoods was too much oh. fun to watch this year because pros had to struggle through the round. The scores were tight. I loved it. I can't wait. I'm actually going out and playing uh MA one at Ledgestone this year and they're giving us Northwood. I'm so excited to get my, get my lunch handed to me. Also uh, again, all these people are telling me darts is massive. Darts is massive. Yes, I get it. <laughs> I, I understand. I've seen it. I've watched it. Yes. Darts is, it's, it's honestly probably a bigger sport than disc golf, oh. but you know what? It's not bigger than literally dozens of other sports. Dozens of other sports. And all I'm saying is there's certain sports that have a ceiling. They just have a ceiling. Horseshoes has a ceiling. Yep. Bags has a ceiling. All these things have ceilings. Yep. Pool, billiards has a ceiling. Sorry. It is yep. what it is. They and what I'm trying perfect. to say is disc golf actually has a higher ceiling than a, a lot of these other sports if they if they go right the right uh, if they go the right path. That's all I'm trying yeah. to say. Especially because the flight of a disc is one of the most alluring so things sick. you could ever see. Yep. Yes. Yes. I'll say that. Shout out to Luke Luke though. Shout out to Luke. He is he is the OG. Very very impressive stuff. Triple 20.